This special show of Dentist TV from the BDTA Dental Showcase is brought to you by Denplan at the heart of dental care. Coming up in this show, we have an interview with Roger Matthews, who is the Chief Dental Officer of Denplan. We have 60 seconds of social media, best of the best, and a whole lot more. So pull up a chair, make yourself a cup of tea, and tune into the show. As we all know, dental exhibitions are a great way to get your brand across to the audience that you're marketing to. And a fantastic way to do this is by having bags that people can take goodie bags away from and walk around the stand. And by doing so, they are taking your brand and your brand messages and walking through the whole exhibition floor and showing everyone else what that is. And the brighter and more attractive the bags are, of course, the more they'll get noticed and everyone else will want one. So we've picked up a few examples of bags that we thought worked particularly well in brand representation and disseminating the values. So here we've got um, integrated dental holdings and they've clearly kept their company branding. It's just a nice little bag upright, they've got their company colours. Of course, bright colours will always be attractive, so DHB have produced this pink bag, which is quite nice, and everyone's walking around with little pink bags, so again, great example. Um, one of my particular favourites is from EMS, which is a pop art look and feel, as you can tell, I feel good, which is brand value associations with their products. So again, very good communication and marketing. Something that's quite ubiquitous at Dental Showcase and a lot of exhibitions are the Blossom Roller Suitcase Boxes. And something they have new this year are wheels that light up when they roll, which is quite, you know, it's unique. It's something new, no one else is doing it. So there's that. And we've got different kind of bags as well. Something that looks like this, made out of canvas, and this is by Denplan. And we also have, I mean, it's great that people come up with unique things, CPD in a box. And it is a box, and the logo is in a box. So it's really clever how that's been brought together. And it's a great sales tool. Then we have little gimmicks such as teddy bears, and this is by Click Dental. They're a new company that have launched, so they're bringing it out by using teddy bears and bags. And it's just really interesting to see who's doing what and getting their message out there to the dental professionals who they want to buy their products. We've got a thought leader interview with Roger Matthews, who is the Chief Dental Officer of Denplan. And he speaks to us about CQC and what Denplan has done to help dentists. Hi, I'm Marita Kritzinger and I'm at the BDTA Dental Showcase. And now I'm speaking with Roger Matthews, who is the Chief Dental Officer of Denplan. Roger, you um, just recently delivered um, a seminar about CQC to a packed out audience, clearly a topic that everyone wants to know more about. Can you tell me a little bit about Denplan's involvement in CQC and what you've done to make this as pain free as possible for dental practices? Yeah, sure, delighted. Um, we were approached by CQC uh, in November 90, 2009 uh, to join their dental advisory group, uh, partly because they wanted to know about the private dental sector, which previously had been unmonitored and unscrutinized to a large degree. Um, we formed the view that CQC was pretty well likely to stay. Uh, I shouldn't say the dentist wanted it, and it's not for me to say whether they needed it, but uh, at the same time, if it was going to happen, then we decided decided to take a pragmatic attitude and say, OK, how can we support our dentists and get them through this registration process as painlessly as possible? OK, so you set up a manual, an instruction manual to how to get registered. Can you tell us a little bit about that, what's in the manual and how you put it together and why you did that? Yeah, sure. Over the summer, uh, we got pretty close to understanding exactly what CQC would be requiring from dentists by way of an application. So using that knowledge and information, we were able to write a sort of straightforward, plain English guide, filling in your application form, and we got it down to about 30 pages, which took you through the application form stage by stage and we were able to get that posted on the web the same day CQC published the draft application form so we were right up with the news. Since then we've had to do quite a few amends as things have changed. We keep our members advised of those as we go along. 
And and so with you speaking at these seminars and you've presented at quite a few here at the BDTA, what are some of the most commonly asked questions or misunderstandings, misconceptions that dentists and practice managers have about CQC and what they need to do? A lot of the issues are around criminal records bureau checks. There seems to have been more confusion and concern about that and the rather tortuous process that is involved in getting these completed. Um, that probably, uh, and, and just the big question, why? Why do we have to do this? Now, I really can't give the sort of overall political answer as to why all this has been foisted on the profession. The CQC tell me that they are not here to stop dentist practicing. They don't want to close practices down. They don't want to set new compliance standards. They want to use the information that's already out there and just unify it and bring it all together. Hopefully, we'll have to see how that turns out. Certainly for Denplan dentists, we hope it will be easy for them to enrol and to register in time for April. Okay. Um, and with CQC and all the other things going on in dentistry, um, well, are there any trends and things that you think are moving dentistry in the right direction? What's your feel um, about dentistry at the moment in the UK? Well, interestingly, many dentists that have phoned in to us have said, yeah, we can actually see the sense of regulation. We may not want it, but we can see the point if it brings everybody up to a common standard. What are the trends in dentistry in the UK at the moment? Well, it looks as though we're going to go into another period of uncertainty as the pilots for a new NHS dental contract are announced by a new administration at the end of this year. Those pilots will have to have time to work through. And then, of course, we have the next big change if it goes through, which will be the abolition of PCTs in England in 2013 and the creation of an NHS commissioning board. That undoubtedly is going to throw a whole new complexion on dentistry going forward. So just when you think it's going to quieten down, it hots up again. <laughs> so I suppose as Chief Dental Officer of Denplan, you, you have your work cut out for you and there's never a dull moment. You always have to keep ahead of what's happening. We do try to keep ahead of what's happening. I'm very privileged. I have a fantastic job where I'm able to visit and meet with a lot of great dentists and fabulous practices. And I really enjoy every minute of that, plus the fact that I never know what tomorrow's going to bring. <laughs> OK, thank you so much for your time, Roger. Thanks. I'm Marita Kritzinger. Back to the studio. And now for 60 seconds of social media, showcase style. Hi, I'm Marita Kritzinger and I've just had a text from Social Media Borg, which is run by Mark Oborn, to meet for a tweet up at stand V24, which is the Mint Marketing Branding Stand. Now Mark, tell me a little bit about what is a tweet up and why you decided to organize these at the BDTA. The, the point is of, of the tweet up is that we're talking to people on Facebook and Twitter constantly throughout the year and all we see is just a little face, just a little logo um, um, and it's kind of who are these people and I th the, the, the really good thing is that we've been engaging with them and talking to them and starting to build a relationship with them but that relationship doesn't actually take it to the next level and become real until we've met them in person. And what we're finding is that people are coming to the tweet ups and it's, oh, hello, hello, how are you? We know something about them, that relationship has already started. And it's becoming a very powerful way of us building a relationship and taking things to the next level with the people that we meet. So you use social media um, to alert everyone who's on Twitter to come to this location and meet each other in person. That's really how it's happened. That, that's how this has happened, yeah. We've been just been talking to people throughout the year, just having conversations on social media. And then we've just used that same medium to say, meet us at this stand at this time and we'll all meet up and have a chat. And fantastic, because if you look behind us now, these are all people who are active in the Twitter sphere that we, Mark and myself, um, connect with. Um, and they've all showed up to interact and have conversations. So it's really social media in action. Now, Mark, um, for dental professionals who are watching this, can you think of some ideas of how a dental practice can use the concept of a tweet up and social media and make it work for them in a marketing point of view? I think the, the important thing is to remember that it's not, it's not something that you do one off. It's not like a round of leaflets or flyers that's one off. So social media is about communicating on an ongoing basis 
business and then when you want to hold an event it's then that we you bring people together so it's about talking to people on an ongoing basis and if you wanted to have um, an open evening or an open day on a particular product or service or an event at a school that you can have um, put that out onto Facebook put it out onto Twitter get people to sign up and get people to, to come to that event so it's not a one-off thing it's about engaging throughout the year and then using Twitter to bring them to one event like a study evening an open evening or an open day that's great social media advice from Mark Oborn at the BDTA Dental Showcase before we continue with the show I'd just like to take a moment to mention this special showcase edition sponsor Denplan at the heart of dental care. Now Denplan is the only dental payment plan provider that patients ask for by name. Denplan prides itself on working for the benefit of you, your patients and your practice. Some of the services that Denplan offer you if you become a member is online support services designed to ease practice administration, marketing and business support from bespoke marketing materials to financial planning, tailor-made clinical and practice management training with verifiable CPD for you and your whole team, seminars to keep you informed about regulatory and political changes, practical support with HTML 105 and CQC registration, bespoke practice training to help with business development and also networking opportunities with like-minded professionals. And now for best of the best feature, we spoke to Kate Adam and Alex Nicola from Mint and they speak to us about the Mint Alliance and how that can be applied to dental practices. Hi, I'm Marisa Kretzinger and I'm at the BDTA Dental Showcase and I'm speaking with Alex Nicolau and Kate Adam from Mint and they've got a fantastic marketing idea. It's called the Mint Alliance. So I'd like you guys to tell us a little bit about the Mint Alliance, what it is and how it works. Well, we know that often strategic alliances work really well for businesses. Um, we know that dentists, particularly like any business owner, want to find trusted partners to work with. And we know a number of people who are also professional service providers to the dentistry profession. So with some of our already friends, we actually decided, OK, today for Showcase, we would launch the Mint Alliance. So we've started off with, uh, this is the end product, and we've started off with eight of us um, that we put together who are all really keen to get involved. The idea is that we, by getting to know one another and what we all do, if any dentist or practice manager is saying, do you know somebody who, then we can recommend to one another. It's not about making more money for one another, it's merely a case of being able to introduce a trusted partner. So dental practices really need to find those businesses in the high street or in the area that have the same audience, same patient base and really add more value to them. And like-minded individuals, it's, it's very much about res, uh, reciprocity, so like-minded individuals, if you don't gel with someone straight away and you don't believe that they're going to appeal to your patient base and you wouldn't trust them, then they're not the right people for you. It's worth spending the time to find really valuable partners and make sure that it is a reciprocal arrangement. Guys, thank you so much for telling us about that. And if you want some more information about Mint, you can go to mintastic.co.uk and the URL will be below this video. Back to the studio. And that's the end of the show. Coming up in part two of the special showcase edition, we have an interview with Dr. Tony Kilcoyne. We have 60 seconds of social media and great product reviews from the exhibition floor. I'm Marita Kritzinger and this is the show that helps dental professionals like you to go from ordinary to extraordinary.